<laughs> Ireland absolutely dominant in Dublin. How did they beat Italy so convincingly? Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me here today to discuss it. How are you, mate? ATT, uh, happy Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, um, very a happy man, happy man. Now, I, I want to start off with the overall feel of the game in, in total. I felt like there was a kind of a low-key feel about it. Was this, like, were people out last night in Dublin and turned up a little bit shady to the game? Was there an air of inevitability maybe about the result? What I mean, what do you think? Do you think, do you agree with me? Or, or if so, what was the uh, reason? Yeah, I, I, I kind of know. There was bits in the game where it was... Um, uh, a little bit empty in terms of atmosphere, I thought. Um, I mean, the, the beginning with um, the the national anthems was was pretty cool with the the young kid um, that was on, and apparently he he was on the Late Late Show, uh, which is a very famous uh, Friday Night Irish thing. Um, I think on the Toy Show, which is a, even a bigger thing, and um, yeah, he was promised to to sing the national anthem. Um, so from the start, it was really good. But I don't, I don't know. It was it was. Um, I, I guess a bit of trepidation uh, or a hangover from yesterday's games, uh, what was going to happen today, um, the expectation around a big Irish win, but then there was changes and lots of changes. How was that going to, you know, play out? Um, and I still think, like, you know, with Sexton missing as well, there's a huge bit of uncertainty around what this team is all about. Um, but I think a few things were put to bed, um, and 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 there was moments where the, the crowd were well. I, I doubt anyone leaving there today was was anything but 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 happy with with the outcome and and, and the performance. To be fair, yeah, I agree. It was a bright, calm looking day in Ireland. Maybe there was a bit of wind. I'm not sure, um, and it just looked set for a really sort of top game. And Italy actually started pretty well. They got a, a bit of pressure in Ireland's territory and won a penalty which they then missed. And I immediately thought, man, they've got to take, if they're going to win these games or be really competitive towards the end, they've got to take every single chance they get. And it was a very kickable penalty. And I just, uh, my heart sunk a little bit for them really early doors. Yeah, they, they needed to take that and just to get some kind of, you know, scoreboard pressure and, and try and unsettle uh, a change team and maybe put some pressure on, you know, where, where they're expected to, to win. Um, I don't know what was going on. They, they were sort of saying that it was a bit swirly there, but certainly the first few kicks or the first five, ten minutes, it almost was like the ball was pumped up too much. He, he struck it really badly then. Then Crowley had a had a kick and it, it was an awful strike. Then there was some really weird touch finds that, that didn't go uh, as you would expect. And then it settled down after that a little bit. But um well Crowley uh, had a mixed day with the boot to be fair. But um yeah, it was it was um that they needed to take that just to put a bit of pressure on 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 the guys in green. Yeah, um, and we're gonna talk about Ireland loads, obviously, with their you know very convincing win. But I just felt I was really disappointed with Italy that they just didn't really perform today. There was loads of good intent, loads of good physicality, but every time they did something well, they kind of let themselves down with the next bit of play. Every time they, well, the attack looked pretty clunky, to be honest. They had very little rhythm there, which they're normally great at. Defensive shape, that I thought they looked really good for long periods, but then they'll just fall off a tackle. And that was all Ireland needed to get some momentum and then pick them off. Um, so I was just very sort of, I'm very sad for them because they often turn up in Dublin and don't perform, and it's happened again today, really. Yeah, I wonder how much sort of the psychology of, of um, you know, are Ireland hitting levels where, we spoke about this all fair, where we're getting to a point of almost having a, a bit of a... Uh, an invincibility sort of thing like New Zealand had for many, many years where they almost go... Like if things don't go right for them very early on, is there is there almost a bit, oh god, here we go, you know, they're gonna they're gonna score here, sort of thing. Um it almost felt like I mean we, we spoke what I was mo most disappointed with was was the breakdown because we had spoken about the fact that they had two sevens and they could not slow the ball down. Um they tried and tried and tried. Ireland were were pretty accurate there. A few bits of indiscipline with neck rolls that they'll be very disappointed with where when Italy did get in. But but even when Italy got in, they didn't get a turnover. Ireland shut it down and, and okay, gave away a penalty. But it, there was never any kind of, you know, uh, turnovers that they could react off and get in behind us. Um, so I think they'll be very disappointed. I think 
you know, that you've got to believe you're gonna you're gonna beat this Ireland team because if you don't, then the game just slowly slips away and they just build score and all of a sudden you're nil and they're twenties and it's even then so that, then it becomes even worse. It's a snowball effect. Not only are you playing against a team that you're that you know is really good, but you're down on points and it just gets worse and worse for you. You've got you've got to believe and there were bits of their I mean their set play was I mean completely dominated um yeah, at Scrum and, and and Ireland really sort of messed up their line out as well. Completely. And somebody described um, Ireland's kind of play as robotic on Twitter. And it was meant as a compliment in terms of they're just so good. They're so consistent with their output and the detail that it's there's no space in the game. There's no room to breathe. And that was certainly the case today. Like whenever they played, they just seemed to be picking the right options. And also, though, sprinkled with a little bit of magic, um, in particular from Jack Crowley, who um, scored the first try himself and then two real quality bits of play to help set up the second. Yeah, he was he was superb today. He made, he made a couple of mistakes, uh, he got blocked again, which is, you know, that's two games on the bounce he's done that. Um, didn't kick well, but my God, he's, he is he is the real deal. I mean, some of the things he was doing, um, the way he, you know, he either does a hitch kick or a pump or something, he takes the ball so close to the line, I, I, you know, He'll probably need to be a little bit careful there because I think he's he's you know asking to get injured really. But that's that he's he's playing on instinct and the other guys are running off him. Um, and he's but it's within a system. Uh, and I thought he stuck to the system really well today. Um, probably better than he did in the in the first week, but was still able to you know sprinkle some magic. I think it's really interesting what Farrell said after in the post match around. Um, he he was a little bit. Disappointed is the wrong word, but he, he he was kind of saying that they need to when they do break, so okay, system, system, and then they get in behind, they need to play more what's in front of them. They they, they need you know, there's a few times where they went through the motions and kind of almost looked for contact or did a little kick through. He was saying that the, the players need to back themselves more, and that's a scary thought, you know, if we get to that point where we are going for a bit like uh, James Lowe, I think is the epitome of that. I thought he was absolutely superb today. He is the most enjoyable bloke to 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 watch playing rugby. Smile on his face. He's going for it all the time. I love him. Um, and he's and from a guy who had fierce uh, criticism of his game when he first started playing around not being quick enough. His defence apparently wasn't good enough. He's gone away, worked at it. He's he's a brilliant example of potentially where they're where they're trying to get to next. Yeah, he was outstanding today. Another player I'd like to pick out as well on the Irish side. I've been bigging him up when we've spoken about him previously. I think his scrummaging is really, really outstanding. And that's Finley Bealham. And he was outstanding again today. The Irish scrum was dominant and it was mostly on his side, to be fair. And he did plenty of great work in the loose as well. I mean, as a as a backup tight head, you can't really ask for too much more. I thought he was outstanding uh, as well. He was really, really good. I mean, we, isn't it amazing to think that they, they didn't miss Tyke Furlong? I mean, it's just... I mean, you know, the strength and depth is getting scary. You're bringing on Van de Fleer, you know, after 60 minutes off the bench. You know, again, you know, psychologically, what does what does that do to you? Another quote from 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 Farrell. You'll like this, TT. Um, he was asked about um, Low getting um, man of the match, um, and he said that um, re- well deserved, but actually, the man of the match today was our scrum. And I thought that was re- really, really interesting. You don't hear that often. And and they've obviously been working on it. Um, maybe a little bit of, um, you know, PR to get out to the world after what we spoke about with Porter and saying, look, you know, we've we figured this out. And, and But they were so dominant every time um, and uh, put them under enormous pressure or got a penalty. Um, but yeah, I thought you'd like that one. Yeah, absolutely did. Having said that, I thought actually uh, the Italian reserve tight head, Zalocchi, when he came on, he made a he made a difference for a brief period of time there. Like he looked stronger in the scrum and some of his tackling was um, ferocious and potentially illegal a couple of times. I thought very sort of Argentinian in style where, you know, just diving at knees. But man, he changed he changed the script a little bit for, for Italy when he came on. I thought he was ferocious. Yeah, there was a few big hits at the end. Was he did, was he the one that hit Keenan? Look, looked like a no arms. They, they never went back for it, but there were some huge physical hits g- going in. You probably would have liked to have seen that legally um, earlier on in the game um, to really kind of shock Ireland, but they 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 couldn't get 
couldn't meet us on the gain line. We kept getting in behind because the, the ball was so quick again. Um, with 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 Casey doing a good job um, at nine. Yeah, another. I hate to talk negative, but this is another thing that Italy really didn't. And it's details. It's really details, but basic details. They struggled to get a box kick away, particularly in the first half. They just didn't get their processes, oh. get the rock long enough. And Varney either got charged down or got touched a few times. And it's these things that, that build pressure that really help you clear your lines and take, you know, and they're not going to be able to compete if they can't get these details right. But this seems new. Like, this is something that they've been able to do previously. So I'm not sure whether it was Varney who was just off key and not, you know, not demanding of, it, of his forwards or, or what, but it was a it was a big error for them, really. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's growing pains with, with the new coaching uh, staff in there. You know, they're, they're clearly uh, more pragmatic. Um they're not. Uh, it, 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 it seemed to me that it was just really slow, and when it's slow, then it can be anticipated. Whereas the way they were playing before was really quick, but they weren't kicking; they were moving the ball. But they just need to speed stuff up and get in, you know, get get their kick chase uh, structure in place quicker and get get the ball going, um, change it up. It was just too predictable, um, and you know, to get to get charged down once, fine. But like you know, you see England do it all the time. Um, Scotland as well. You need to get a player in front of the kicker slightly, well, to the side legally, so that then you know th there's almost a blocker there and a bit of protection. But they didn't do that. Um, uh, okay, fine, right. Let's see what happens in two weeks' time. If they haven't fixed that, then we can really go to town on Casada and his coaching staff. But, but I would presume that they will they will fix that. But yeah, it was a uh, at international level. That's it's that's pretty unacceptable. Kind of criminal, really. Um, it is. Next player I want to talk about is Dan Sheehan because he scored two tries, but I strongly think that he probably should have had four. Uh, there was the more yeah. before Conan scored. I am I'm absolutely convinced he dived over the five meter line, thinking it was the try line. Like he yeah. didn't trip, he didn't lose his feet or anything. It was a dive to score. I'm certain of it, and I think he realised in the act that it wasn't the five meter line. Nobody on comms picked it up. But I'm convinced yeah. that's true. And then second half, when uh, it was Varney actually who tackled him, a brilliant tackle to be fair to sort of stop him because it looked every, you know, she really should have scored, shouldn't he? Yeah, I, I would have. Uh, no, um, he, he it's uh, well. Let's, should we mention the TMO? There was some chat around because obviously Ireland scored after that, didn't they? And then it was uh, it was brought back, but. Uh, there was a lot of chat about actually he he did score and they should have checked us. Uh, apparently the ball the ball was grounded uh, on the line. Let's not go there. Um, but yeah, the one I before that, yeah, it. I thought he dropped that one as well. Actually, though. Oh, did he? What in the corner, top left? Uh, maybe, so, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe. But I I I think you're right. Uh, when he, he we kind of spun out of that mall, um, and sort of what kind of made me giggle was if you watch it again, how he presents the ball. It's really funny. He's kind of scrambling back. <laughs> it's kind of a <laughs> It's a guy who knows he's messed up and he's really trying to trying to trying to get trying to get back. Um, but listen, uh, chatting to, to to the rugby wife, uh, we were talking about both. We both played hooker, uh, although he went on to play wing. And uh, anyway, uh, we both think he is at at minimum best hooker in the world right now. At minimum, and I'm probably a good shout for World Player of the Year. He's he's all over the place. He's and his his defense is. Is incredible and his energy, you know, for a hooker, you know, you're scrummaging and everything else. He's a real, 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 real powerful kid, and and his fitness, his fitness levels are really impressive. And and also the basics, you don't, we don't talk about him missing lineouts or anything else or you know throws. He's really consistent, um, and you got to, you know, he's keeping Keller out of the squad as well, so he must be bloody good. Um, and just just to, to sort of build on that, uh, in, in, just to mention Ireland's mall, I'm so impressed with. What O'Connell's doing, the the length of the mall. I mean, to be fair to Italy, they they defended really really well uh, because it could have got brutal. Um, but they, the, if you watch how long they get the mall really quickly, and they've worked they've they've worked with the referees, and they're not getting pinged as much in terms of obstruction where they were getting at before World Cup and in World Cup they were getting pinged all the time in their setup. Really really good from O'Connell, and, and he's really stepped up on that in terms of both winning the ball at line out, but also. This um this build of a of a long mall and I think that will be a weapon for us moving forward in the competition. Yeah, it was certainly very effective today, that's for sure. Now in the post match, Andy Farrell said he was happy enough with the performance. What do you think? Out out of ten, how good was this from Ireland? Uh, 
Well, so out of ten, how good? I I don't think we got out of second gear. Um, and I think we were worldy. Um, really good. Uh, I mean, I'd score us probably five, six, but that's you know that, that sounds like we played terrible. We didn't. We played really well. It's, it's more okay, we didn't. We I mean, we left a lot of points out there. There's there's no doubt we should have scored should have scored more tries. Um, what I would say is that it was a clinical professional performance. You know, if if you, if you, if you look at you know, bearing in mind they played England last week and what did you know England only won by uh, you know three points. Okay, they scored late. Um, but we look like a team that's been together for ages, which we have. We have our processes, everything else, which we have. We just look very, very good. Um, um, but we haven't been tested yet, you know, and, and I think Wales probably will. I think we need to be beaten up. I think teams need to come and try and put us off our game um, and get angry and, and very physical without without sort of losing players to yellow cards. That's the only way you're going to upset you know, like La Rochelle um, have done to Leinster on, on, in two years on the bounce. Now then, something slightly different. Uh, after every try was scored, Zombie was played over the loudspeakers. Uh, fan or not a fan? Oh, fan. Absolute <laughs> fan. It's, it's, an, it's a banger of a tune. Oh, it's Dolores a banger of a tune. Is it not being overdone? Oh, I see what you mean. Um... Well, I mean, maybe we should get a brass band and, uh, or like, uh, no, no, it's, it's, you got, if it's working, it's working. What, what do you think? Do you, you think it's as an England fan, you're, you're getting sick of us? Uh, it's not, nothing to do with being an England fan. I just think, um, <laughs> I, I, I think these things have a time and a place. And, and that, that was the song of the World Cup. And like, I just feel like they've sort of grabbed onto something and, and sort of maybe overdoing it. Maybe that was only the case because Ireland scored so many tries today. Who knows? But um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, well, look, there's there's so many amazing Irish artists to choose from. So uh, you know, we'll, we'll pick some other ones. Pick some other ones. <laughs> uh, okay. Any sort of uh, final thoughts, Alco? Anything we haven't covered that you want to to bring up and discuss? Um, well, we kind of in in our prep, we were you know, it's hard to leave out some of the some of the players. I mean, you go through. I mean, Keenan again was was brilliant today. That you know, taking that quick free kick from the mark and that really got them going within the game. I thought he was he was excellent in, in attack. You know, I think Ryan Baird was was really good. That that take uh, running back to take the the kick off over his head. Wow! And then the break he made and and the little sidestep. I thought he was he was really good. Conan was was Conan. I think he's so underrated. But I think the most the guy that didn't get a lot of sort of airtime today, who I thought was magnificent, was was uh, McCluskey at twelve. I th- he was. He, we spoke about it. If you you know if you're going to watch the game again, just have a look at you know how hard he takes it up and then he pulls it back. His skill levels have gone gone up so much. It just shows that when you're in a happy camp and in a confident camp. And you have self belief. You can you can play really well. And um, I thought he was he was superb. Um, and I, I thought most of the boys played played pretty well. I don't think anyone had a had a had a poor game. Uh, to be fair, I think they all they all played pretty well. Yeah, I want to back up what you said about Baird and his hands as well. There was also a half charge down kick that was spinning, which he somehow caught above his head as well. Absolutely yeah. brilliant hands. And then the last person I want to say is about Gibson Park, who just came on and was fizzing at the end. It would be so easy to come on in that situation when you know your position is pretty much cemented in the team and not add any energy. But he added, even though it was only eight minutes to go and the game was completely won. So um, fair play should to have him. Scored, right? Probably should have scored. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, people at home, that's what, that's what we think. Uh, that's where we think the game was won or lost. Do you think, well, me in particular, do you think I'm being harsh on Italy or do you think that's fair enough? What do you think about this Irish performance? Do you think agree with Alco? Is maybe a five or a six? I thought maybe a little bit higher, but not by much. Um, would love to have your opinions. Get them in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind while you're down there. And it just leads me to say, Alco, thanks so much again for your time today. I can only just hear that. Oh, we'll have to edit that in. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, CT. <laughs> roll on, roll on. Okay, and you at home, you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.